Hello, welcome back to my video series where I'm learning to make or making a game engine using DirectX 11 and C++ for a Universal's, Universal Windows platform application. And if you saw the end of the last video, we had finished with just a basic 2D shape, a 2D triangle. And now we're starting to get into rendering 3D objects. And so you can see we've got a rotating cube, which is actually very similar to what I would have started with had I just used the template that comes from Visual Studio for Universal Windows platform applications. But if you remember from the last video, I said that I ended up deleting a lot of the preliminary files based on a tutorial series I was looking at. But so we're back to rendering 3D. Um, this object here is actually uh, the same thing, essentially. I've just scaled it slightly so it looks more like a post and obviously it's not rotating. And I've got a very basic grid um, that I just put in to give some perception of what um, where the zero level was. And other than that, um, I've just set up a few things as I prepare to um, include more functionality that resembles a proper game. So for example, adjusting camera movements um, so if I'm pressing the WASD keys, I can move the camera around. Um, it, in this case, it's just changing where the camera is looking for now, almost like a, almost like a surveillance camera. Um, but I think eventually I'll make it a first-person camera. And also, for no real reason other than I thought it would look cool for this video, if I press the G key, we'll see this cube grow in size. And if I press the H key, it will reduce in size. Um, kind of an interesting effect, actually. If I keep shrinking it, you can see it eventually starts enlarging again, which makes sense because essentially I'm scaling it now by a negative number. But what you can actually see is the uh, um, one of the uh, effects when it comes to rendering shapes. So you only actually render one side of a triangle. So all these objects are built out of triangle meshes. And to save space, you tend to only, you, you only render one side in DirectX. I think that's the default. And so what we've done when we've multiplied it by a negative number is we've actually flipped around these triangles. And so whereas originally we were rendering all, the, all of the outside of the cube, now we're only rendering, um, you know, or we're only seeing the back face of some of them. So that's why we're missing the top of the cube and some of the sides, if that makes sense. Okay, so in terms of the tools I've been using to get up to the stage, I've been still mostly following this particular website. I showed it in the last, um, my, well, my first post. So it's directxtutorial.com. And I did actually realize, so I mentioned in the last video that I had done a bit of this a few years back, I think five years ago. And so on this website, um, you only really get up to the drawing a triangle phase, a 2D triangle um, on using the free content, but they've also got this premium content. and. It just so happens that I happen to have paid for it uh, a few years back. And so um, it's not one of those monthly subscriptions, so it was still available to me. So I've stuck with that, but I'm not necessarily saying this is what you should do. Um, there's definitely more content online than there was five years ago. And if I'm honest as well, I mean, when I signed up to this, as I said, five years ago, um, there was promises of new material. Um, it was, so it's 50 us dollars. Um, and you know, you get these extra lessons where you sort of move into 3d. Um, but I was just having a look earlier and if you actually look at his content, um, you know, so he's included some links to a game site of his and, uh, you know, one of his games. And when you actually open all of these, um, they're all, all the links are no longer working. The link to his Twitter is work isn't running anymore. So I have no idea what's happened there. Um, clearly, the site is still running. But as I said, so 
because I had paid for this a few years back and I still have it available, I, I really like this tutorial series, so I've just kept going with it. Um, but I'm not by any means recommending uh, that necessarily. There will definitely be plenty of options online. I haven't uh, looked too deeply. Um, I did end up using this site here actually briefly. Um, I don't really know what this site is either. It almost seems like a, a personal website, except it's a team of people, but they have a game programming section. And um, there are a couple of issues based on following the original tutorial series with regard to getting the the depth, depth rendering work and, you know, being able to, um, you know, ensure the depth perception was working okay. And that was, I eventually found what was wrong by using this site here. And, you know, so this site um, has example code as well. So. so as I said, I think the next step that I'm keen to do is get some light into the scene to give it a bit more of a 3D feel and maybe render some 2D textures onto the objects. And then I think after that, we're really then ready to start exploring further in terms of introducing game mechanics. I think at that point, I'll have the foundations I need in place. And I'm still undecided on where I want to take this. Um, I, you know, I've been having ideas as I go, which was kind of how I intended it to be. And, you know, it's a case of whether to you know, set the scope small and try and build a polish, something polished, or whether to keep kind of experimenting for a while, you know, to try and push the boundaries of what we can do in DirectX in terms of um, rendering some really great looking graphics. So yeah, I'm undecided. I'm just going to focus now on getting the light working, the 2D textures, and then I'll see how I feel from that. And so hopefully see you in future videos. Thank you.